Table 33, actually there's a mobile left casually in one of the flower walls. And what's interesting about this mobile is that it is actually recording this conference. Also very interesting is that each, it is editing each and every presentation. So if the speaker is boring, it adds a joke. And if the, if the presentation is getting too long, it curtails it. Another thing that Bot has already told me is that before me, there is a speaker who's already spoken on, on how an AI is being used in education. And a presentation is coming where my professor from IIM Bangalore, Professor Sadgopan, is talking about how to skill people for AI and ML. So the bot is actually suggested me that I stick to something else. OK, so I don't know how much of my presentation is useful. By the way, the owner of this app is outside because he's catching up with his friends in Bombay as the cell phone attends this conference. So one of our challenges in education today is not just what we teach, but who should we teach? Uh, if machines are going to learn everything, what are people going to learn? So Sudhanshu said, you know, it's coming, but it's going to take a long time. But I don't know what is long time. Uh, so what has our journey been? We started Pro School in 2007. Uh, the idea was to create industry-ready resources. And when we started, uh, there was a book that came out by a gentleman called Daniel Pink. I don't know anybody read that book. It was called A Whole New Mind. So in that book, Mr. Pink argued that there were three big trends that will decide what the career should be and therefore set the agenda for educationists. And he spoke about three trends. First was machines will do everything better. So all repeatable tasks will get automated. Whatever is not automated will get bangloed. That was a term in 2005, very popular, bangloed. And we have been, we've been reaping the benefit of bangloreization for the last decade or so. And the third, another interesting trend was abundance. What, what abundance means is every American in 2002 already had 1.2 cars per person. 45% of the items in their cupboard hadn't been touched for over a year. And if you bought a toilet brush, it was signed Frank Sinatra something, you know, as if, as if somebody had designed it, some artist had designed it. So even if you were buying a toilet brush, it had to be a designer brush. So these were the three trends at that time, Asia, abundance, and automation. And what he argued, that because of this trend, the focus has to be on right brain thinking. Because left brain will either get automated or will get bangloed. So what educationists had to do was to teach people how to write a story, how to do writing in general, how to be creative. Because it was the storytelling which was selling the goods. So you bought a bottle of wine because of the story behind. It was already creating your taste buds. So if you knew how to swirl your scotch, then it became interesting. So you had to tell a story to sell something. So people had to be told, and Apple is a great example of that success. You know, the manufacturing is somewhere else, but 33% Abidda is being earned on the story and the design. Isn't that exciting stuff? So this is what, when Pro School was started with a vision to create industry-ready professionals. I thought, uh, what to tell you guys, you are all machine learning AI experts. Uh, and I'm a mere educationist, so I'm not a practitioner. So I thought it would be interesting to just look at what is happening in 2018 and see whether Daniel Pink, when he revisits his predictions, what will he say? So automation has certainly become a monster trend, which is actually trying to kill the other two trends. Asia itself is getting automated. And second thing is the, you know, the entire protectionist attitude that is killing the trend in Asia. Abundance is also getting saturated because of, I mean, we have been talking about all the positive benefits of AI, but there are a lot of people worried that it's Sachin and Bunny, uh, Sachin and uh, Mr. Adar Bansal, their abundance is happening, but what is happening to the common man? Enough economists are worried about deflation now because what is happening, what is going to happen to the paying capacity of people? So I think people at large are now beginning to get worried about jobs and how AI will impact the paying capacity. So this abundance 
abundance uh, trend is again getting is in a difficult situation. What does it mean? Now, I took an example because we also do a lot of training in financial analytics space and in finance in general, investment banking, equity research. Now, if you look at equity research sell side, I mean, Subhanshu just mentioned that, you know, the lower end jobs are getting automated. This is sell side equity research. It's a $16 billion annual spend, which happens on research. 40,000 reports are written every week. Only 2.5% reports are actually read, which means there's a huge inefficiency, which is getting corrected, nudged by a regulation. But also because, again, there is an automation happening. Uh, one of my batchmates has actually written a credit research uh, app which could do a much better job because it has a web analytics engine at the back end which trolls through the web. He finds out what is happening with company, not just the company, but the promoter, not just the promoter, but with his products and with his competition. And the research report that it is going to churn out will outdo most of the analysts. So while one of my batchmates has created this, couple of my batchmates in Hong Kong have lost their equity research jobs. Uh, so it is not just it is not just the menial jobs that are getting automated, but as something like equity research, a sort after job at most of the IMs getting out, uh, automated. Look at what the asset managers are saying. 30% are planning to slash budgets. 30% of asset managers are slashing their research budgets. And this is the trend. If you see that declining trend about what is happening to the number of analysts. By the way, this is not such a bad thing for India because Bangaloreization of this process is still happening. So actually, I think Genpac numbers will go up in equity research uh, for the time being. Okay, now if we look at the back office, all this is a back office of an investment bank. All the green blocks that you see are going to be affected by RPA, that robotic process automation. So these are the back-end jobs, almost 45 to 50 percent, which are going to get automated in the next two years. We created a product for training these staff last year. Before we can actually start selling it, the processes are already getting automated. So entire, I mean, it, our, our investment in building the product can't be recovered now. Because they, by the time I sell, make students aware that this is a good career, the career would be gone. So this is, this is what is the challenge that as educationists we are facing what to train by the time we build a product you know the product is becoming obsolete and I think that is going to get discussed in next session so I would spare you guys that what is the implication for India in the next five to ten years it basically means we need to shift towards higher skills IT industry already knows that a lot of people are already preparing so I think it's an old story told enough focus on right brain will continue because I think if make my trip UI has to be as good as Airbnb, then our ability to come up and design UIs is going to be very, very important. And obviously, AI, machine learning, deep learning, it's a huge trend. I mean, there is no, no confusion about that part. Okay, so next possible question in, in your mind possibly is, will we have enough resources? I mean, that is where I fit into this conference, whether there will be enough AI machine learning resources. So if I look at ProSchool itself, I mean, in the last three years, when since we started AI machine learning analytics training, uh, we have grown from zero to now this year, 3,000 students being trained. So we are probably one of the largest classroom training organization in analytics, 1819. We have 12 centers across the country. If I look at training industry apart from ProSchool, uh, there is one program being launched every week. Every week, somebody or the other is announcing. So there are three types of players. One are uh, institutes like IIMs, IIIT, etc. These are professional institutes, Praxis. I think you heard them in the morning. Then there are online players like the Coursera's of the world. And then there are players in the middle who try to do some classroom and some flexibility like us. So all three are trying their own in their own ways. And I think one course is being announced every week. So I was, look, I was thinking what could be a target. Uh, so I think 5 lakh people to be trained in next 5 years is a target analytics industry. I mean, training industry can definitely cater to, provided you guys create those many jobs. 
fair enough now quality is another concern that the industry has that there are a lot of people getting trained but what is the quality and i think it will remain a concern uh, but will iron out slowly i mean we have had quality concern with our mbas with our engineers so i think some of that maramari will continue but i think will sort out in itself okay now so next 5 to 10 years actually look quite good for india because we can still ride the ai ml wave there are almost 30 lakh people working in it industry and i think almost 20 lakh are looking for upgrade or upskilling and enough capacity is coming to upgrade and upskill them so that is not a problem there is enough enough interest from uh, the industry professional as well as fresh engineers to retrain themselves and there is enough capacity coming through so i think that is not a challenge but some people are asking me what beyond 10 years what about what beyond 5 to 10 years now now it's very interesting the next 5 to 10 years but when one starts to think beyond 10 years then it starts to become very scary because i think job loss is a reality so when i was coming here i told my daughter i am going to talk about machine learning and education so she asked me what is machine learning so i told her alexa so then she says okay why can't we do away with third language in our school because there is google translate so there is no need to teach third language in the school now because there is google translate so that is what my daughter told me so she immediately found an opportunity to do away with one subject now yesterday i was with some of my friends from praxis and we were talking and i am going to steal that idea from charan who's here so he was saying boss why do we need to teach statistics and machine learning because there is going to be deep learning all we need to teach people is how to do iteration or not even teach they have to just know iteration because even even linear regression will not be required if you have enough amount of data so then who do i teach is a equally important question as much as what do i teach so he, he was joking yesterday that you know when we stopped using our limbs we had to i mean we, we didn't have to walk to work and we didn't have to do physical labor so we had to create gyms for exercise so if this deep learning thing is going to continue then probably as training companies we can launch gyms where you will be asked to do 2 plus 2 just to exercise your brain so i think it's very very scary uh, 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 i mean i think there is a debate going on between the experts elon musk and zuckerberg i don't know who's going to win uh, but but it, it 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 definitely once you start looking beyond next 5 10 years of excitement and try to uh, you know uh, extrapolate the whole story then at least to educationists who are supposed to predict trends and prepare students for the future practically that doesn't happen we are always lagging behind the industry and we are always trying to see okay what do you need can i create those guys uh, so we are basically lagging the industry when we should be leading but when we try to lead looks very scary uh kane said in the long run we are all dead now i don't think he meant uh, you know dead as in the whole race is dead because when I, when i started my career the buzzword was computerization so a section of society was worried about losing their jobs now 25 years later internet is all pervasive and a larger section of the society is worried about individual freedom but if you extrapolate ai deep learning i think the relevance of the race is in human race itself is under question Uh, because you don't seem to need people to do anything i mean alexa will take over uh, i don't know how what my what my wife will say to that but alexa is getting really 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 cool and if you saw the presentation that mr sundar pichai gave two days back uh, then that's very exciting you know the call will happen your table will be booked i don't know if the call will happen and my daughter will be picked up by somebody else because the ai engine can tomorrow say you know which voice do you want mothers fathers padosis so i think it is going to get into very dangerous territory and uh, hopefully we have found a way to deal with nukes so we'll found it find we'll find a way to deal with the uh, ai and deep learning and hopefully it won't be as catastrophic as some of some of the people are predicting that it is like 65000 years back when dinosaurs were wiped out and we are one of those so i will uh, end at that the bell has rung